Okay, so we're going to have a look at a really beautiful proof from graph theory. That's the proof that an n-dimensional hypercube graph is bipartite. So here a graph, this is a collection of vertices which can be joined together by edges. Now, bipartite graph, this is a special type of graph where essentially you can split up all your vertices into two disjoint sets. So you can partition the vertices into two sets, A and B such that essentially the idea is there are no edges connecting any two vertices in A, there are no edges connecting any two vertices in B. So we say such that there are no edges between vertices in A and none between vertices in B. But of course you can have some between a vertex in A and a vertex in B. Okay. And your sort of general picture you're looking at here is you've got your set A, you've got your set B, you have some vertices in here, and you're allowed to have some edges going between A and B, but none in A and none in B. So, for example, if I include this edge, it's no longer bipartite. So, to show that an n-dimensional hypercube graph is bipartite, we'll start just by having a look at the idea of the proof for the 3D cube. And the main sort of thing to observe here that's going to help us on our proof is the fact that two edges are connected to each other if and only if their coordinates have exactly one difference. So let's write this out. So two vertices share an edge. if and only if exactly one of their coordinates, so exactly one of their coordinate entries are different. So this is a really useful fact, and we'll use this property as well for the n-dimensional hypercube. So for example, 0, 0, 0, this is connected to 0, 1, 0, so you just go along 1 in the y direction here from 0 to 1, but it's not connected to, this 0, 0, 0 is not connected to 0, 1, 1, this is two steps away, so there's no edge connecting those, and you've got a difference of two coordinate entries there. So what we can do now is basically we can just start building up our sets A and B for the 3D cube. So without any loss of generality, we'll put 0, 0, 0 in the set A. So now we need to think, okay, we're not allowed to have any edges joining vertices in A, so you certainly can't put 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, or 0, 0, 1 into A. So let's put all of these into B and then see where that takes us. So 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and 1, 0, 0, are all going into B. And then if we look at which ones are these connected to that we've not done yet, well we've not done 1, 1, 0, we've not done 1, 0, 1, we've not done 0, 1, 1. These have all got to go into A, and that's actually fine because none of those are connected to 0, 0, 0. Okay, so if we go for 0, 1, 1, and then 1, 0, 1, then we're also putting 1, 1, 0. These go into set A. And then finally all we're left with is 1, 1, 1. This is only connected to these three. So it's fine to put 1, 1, 1 in B. So we've got a partition now. This is really nice, and you can sort of use the picture here to help. But what we're really using is the fact that vertices share an edge if and only if there's exactly one difference between their coordinate entries. So here, A seems to be 0, 0, 0, and then we put in B all the ones that have only 1, 1 in their coordinate entries. And then A's got all of the ones that have two ones in their coordinate entries. And then finally we put the one with three ones into B again. So there's sort of all your even count, so there's either zero or two ones going in A, and then all of your odd counts, either one or three ones, are going into B. If I draw this out, it perhaps doesn't look quite like how you'd expect a nice bipartite graph to look based on this picture, because it doesn't really seem to be split in two. Of course, with graph theory, 
what you can do is you can move around your vertices, you can move around your edges as much as you like, as long as you don't change the connections between them. So if I move the blue vertices down a bit, and move the red ones near to the top, hopefully you can see now that we have got this sort of correct picture. Lots of different edges connecting between blue and red, but then there's none between the blue. So it's, we've got our set B here at the bottom, and we've got our set A at the top. Just to make sure that this is really nice and clear, you can see you've only got edges going from A to B, you've not got any edges between the vertices in A. Now we're ready to actually prove this for the n-dimensional hypercube graph, and we'll try and be a little bit more rigorous with this argument. So the very first thing we'll do is we'll actually define our sets A and B. So A is going to be the set of all vertices. So here I'm indexing the vertices by their coordinates in Cartesian space. So here this is 0, 1 to the power of n. This just means the hypercube graph of dimension n is the Cartesian product. It's quite a nice shorthand way of writing that. And we're going to take all the vertices so that when you add up values of the coordinate entries, you get an even number. And then this gives us a really nice natural partition. We let B be the same thing, the set of all your vertices on your n-dimensional hypercube graph, so that when you add up their coordinate entries, you get an odd number. And then we'll proceed with a sort of mini contradiction argument. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at A. If you let V and W be two vertices in A, distinct vertices, we'll assume that they share an edge, and then hopefully we'll get a contradiction out there. So assume for a contradiction, that V and W share an edge. Now, let's use this little really important fact. Two vertices share an edge if and only if exactly one of their coordinate entries are different. So this means we say V, write this as V1 to Vn. And if we write W as w1 up to wn, okay. then we can also say this is equal to, for some entry, it's different. So maybe we'll call this v1 up to vk prime. So this is the different one, and then vn. So what are we going to do with this to get a contradiction? Well, we know that when we add up v1 up to vn, so V is in A, therefore the sum from, we'll say from I equals 1 to N of VI, we know that this is even. So when we add up all the coordinate entries for V, we get an even number. And we assume W is in A as well, so we should get an even number there too. But we've changed exactly one of them. And we've changed it either from a 0 to a 1, or we've changed it from a 1 to 0. So if I say this is even equal to 2m for some integer m. So we say, but w is basically the same thing. So w has one difference coordinate entry. So if we do the sum of i equals 1 to n of our wi, this is going to be equal to 2m either plus or minus 1, which is odd, because this is a contradiction. So what this means is for any two vertices, the generic distinct vertices in A, they can't share an edge. So Therefore, V, W can't share an edge.
So there are no edges between vertices in A. And we could do the exact same thing for our set D as well. So we also we need to have absolutely no edges joining any two vertices in D. If you take two of them and you assume that they share an edge, then your first one, so we call this, uh, perhaps we call it V, like v again, and we call the other one W, then your sum of all the coordinate entries for V has to be an odd number, but your sum of all your coordinate entries for W for in V also has to be an odd number. But they differ by exactly one, so you'd have an odd number either plus or minus one, which would give you an even number. So if I just write here, it's the same argument, so similarly, for B. And then we don't actually care about the vertices between A and B. So if you've got a vertex in A and a vertex in B, they can share as many edges as you like, as long as there are none between vertices in A and there are no edges between vertices in B. So therefore, our n-dimensional hypercube graph is bipartite. So for a final remark, we can have a quick look at what do these partitions actually look like, the n-dimensional hypercube graph. So if you remember for the 3D cube, we were essentially looking at all of the groups of vertices that gave you an odd sum and gave you an even sum. So your A was the evens and your B was the odds. And if you're familiar with the equation of a plane in three dimensions, you'll be able to see that this has actually split up our graph into all the vertices which are contained in four different parallel planes. So here, they've all got the same direction, they're all parallel to each other, stacked on top of each other. And you can picture this on your cube. As you've got a plane going here, then you've got a plane which goes through these three vertices here, and then you've got another plane up here, and finally another one which just touches the top vertex there. And the picture's very similar in n dimensions, only now we've got hyperplanes. So if we move along, if you've got the equation essentially of a hyperplane here, the sum of all your coordinates of zero, and so on, up till x1 plus x n plus xn equals n minus one. Of course, this picture is slightly different depending on whether n is odd or even. So here I'm doing the case where n is odd. So we've got the same sort of picture here. And if you were to draw this out in n-dimensional space, you would get lots of different hyperplanes, all parallel to each other, all stacked one on top of the other. And of course, if n was even then, you'd have a slightly different picture, which would be more like this, than when n is odd. Okay, so a contains the final point. So hopefully this can give you a really nice little bit of insight into what does our partition of the hypercube graph look like.